Je suis Amory Séché et vous regardez Coinspace. I'm sitting down here with Amare Sachet from Bitcoin ABC. How are you doing, Amare? How have you been enjoying the BCH DevCon here in Amsterdam? I think it's pretty cool seeing like old people coming with, you know, all kind of ideas and, and trying to make stuff happen. Um, yeah, we need we need events like this, you know, like it's foster creativity in the ecosystem. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, more importantly, however, everyone wants to know what you've been doing, both physically and mentally, to prepare for this hash war, which is coming in about two weeks' time. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of yoga in Thailand. Uh, I think this is like the most important stuff you can do to be absolutely ready for the hash war. Definitely. Uh, if you're not like mentally prepared for this event that's going to happen, then uh, you know you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, but. Uh, more on that, what do you think about uh, the opposing side here that you're coming up against? Craig has been amassing a lot of patents recently uh, on Bitcoin Cash related technologies. So uh, as a person who's uh, pre-ANCAP, how do you feel about somebody doing this? Uh, so patents are essentially government granted monopoly on something which is, you know, not good <laughs> generally, but yeah, on, on the other hand, they do exist. Like you get a, you, like, you know, this is the rule of the system we have right now. So you kind of have to take that into account. You cannot really, you know, decide that you don't like patent and, and so you're gonna ignore patents. But uh, I don't think it's a, you know, I don't think it's very good for the ecosystem in general. Um, what would your, um priorities be uh, as the leader of Bitcoin ABC in order to continue uh, helping Bitcoin Cash grow is uh, the canonical transaction ordering which has been an issue for many people recently is that something that is going to assist in this so the I think so Bitcoin ABC is working on the infrastructure there is a lot of stuff that needs to happen that are non infrastructure um, that are very important as well on the adoption front and all of that. But on the infrastructure specifically, I think the two most important stuff we need to work on is making um, uh, transactions as instant as possible, like making zero transactions very secure, and make sure we can scale um, you know, as big as possible. And um, so CTOR, CTOR help on that second front. Uh, by reducing the amount of data you need to transmit when you produce a new block, and making it easier to parallelize the validation of blocks. On canonical transaction ordering, so uh, if you're able to get that through and it's all happy days in a few weeks' time, what are the next goals for ABC? Is there any other uh, plans for additional features or things that you're planning to implement in six months' time after that? Uh, so yeah, there's the, the next upgrade is going to take place in May 15. Mm. So. This is already set, but what goes in there is under discussion right now. Um, they're probably going to have a set of opcodes. So Bitcoin SV want to introduce a set of opcodes. The problem is the feature freeze date for November was August 15, and they essentially finalized the spec something like two weeks before the freeze date, yep. which didn't leave enough time for everybody to review and make sure yeah. everything is good. Uh, but it seems that there is demand for those opcodes, so they're probably going to go in May. Um, no, they're probably gonna have, have a few other stuff, but I cannot, you know, say what they're like. Sure. We need to discuss with various sectors in the ecosystem. Like okay. there is this impression that we are pushing this roadmap and talking with nobody, but it, that that wouldn't work that way. Yeah, it's been pretty transparent from what I'm seeing, right? And uh, as you said, there's like a date uh, before you need to submit all these changes so they can be reviewed by people. And um, yeah, ABC has been uh, keeping up with that, right? It's, uh, yeah, we think it's very important to have a predictable schedule because we have a whole ecosystem that rely on, on you know, that builds upon what we are doing. And, and so those people that build upon, they, they need to know what to expect, otherwise they're going to build on something else, right? So we need to make sure that every time we do something, they know several months in advance so they can, you know, prepare on their own. 
uh, you know, make sure that their system is still working and all of that with the change that, mm. that we've predicted. So this is why we think that it's very important to, you know, stick to a very clear timeline that everybody knows about. In what event would there be uh, like another chain split? I don't think that's very likely at this point in time, but um, the other uh, Craig camp has been saying that we're not going to let them uh, get away with what they want to do at all costs. So uh, w what are they planning to do there, do you think, in order to prevent this upgrade that has been proposed with ABC features? So I, I don't quite, like, you know, it's not like they share all their plan with me. <laughs> but, um, so they say they don't want a split, but at the same time they are pushing for a software that if they run that software, they're going to be a split, like 100% guaranteed. So what they are saying and what they are doing is not congruent with each other right now. Um, what I think is that a lot of it is, you know, showing how tough and how much of a big guy uh, they are, they want to present themselves as. Um, so, so that's part of it. Uh, from from that analysis, I did use that probably they're gonna be, you know, it's gonna be much less eventful than the amount of noise that there is an, around it would let us to believe. Um, but if they decide, if they decide to actually go through with it, uh, then we're gonna have a split similar to what happened in August last year. Okay. About a week ago, they had this Satoshi's Vision Summit thing in uh, Italy, and you attended that uh, among a number of other Bitcoin Cash developers. So what were the key takeaways from this event? So, um, actually, I think there was a, a lot of agreements between participants. Um, and most people thought that in the short term, doing what is called fraud proof is probably the best option. So fraud proof is a technology that allows you to prove that someone is trying to do double spend without rolling the double spend. Um, this technology is pretty good, but it doesn't prevent double spend in any way. It just uh, makes it easier for people to know that this is going on and take appropriate measure. On the longer term, there is a set of technology um, that you know go under the, under the umbrella of pre-consensus mm. that help not only detect um, detect zero conf but resolve them in like you know a few seconds so but this is this is longer term because this is like you know more more complicated and longer to develop yeah on the italy event uh, what were the findings of peter ryzen because prior to the event he had tweeted out that uh, there was a, a double spending issues that had been able to um, he'd been able to double spend. So was there any substance to these claims and what did he find? Yeah, so he's actually not the first one having done that research. There is some other person whose name I can't remember right now that, that did a similar research and got similar results. Essentially what he was able to show is that you can double spend um, not with 100% reliability, but with you know somewhere between 20 to 30% reliability using certain techniques. Uh, mostly, so mostly uh, due to miner having different policies for various stuff. So say you have miner A and miner B and miner A accept lower fees than miner B. Then what you can do is you send a transaction on the network that pays a very low fee that miner A is going to accept but miner B is not going to accept, right? And you pay a merchant or you know whoever through that. And then later on, uh, preferably when you get out of the shop, uh, yeah. You send a transaction that pay a, a fee that is slightly higher that minor B is going to accept, but minor A is going to reject it because um, yeah, you know it applies the first seen rule, so it has seen another transaction first. And then depending on uh, who of minor A or B find the block first, um, the transaction or the double spend is going to be mined. And um, so this is not a technique that allow you to double spend with 100% reliability because you don't know which minor is going to find. A block first, but um, this is something that, um, as far as you know, the the study show, you can do, you know, with reliability somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. So it's, you know, high enough so that it's a concern in my opinion. Right. So is there anything that they've um, worked out they can enact in order to um, make the transactions more secure? So yeah, as I was talking before, there is essentially two directions that were discussed. Yeah. Uh, the first one is more axed around fraud proofs, um, which doesn't like 
it doesn't prevent the fraud from happening, but it allows everybody involved to know, um, you know, very early on yep. and, and take appropriate measure. So that's the first direction. And the second direction is pre-consensus that allows to essentially like nip the problem in the bud. Um, because instead of having a time scale of several minutes to do the fraud proof, you end up having a time scale of several seconds. So you don't have the time to, you know, even if it's a face-to-face -face interaction, you don't have the time to get out of a shop or whatever. So, but the thing is like pre-consensus is much newer and require more work, so it's probably gonna come later. So um, the decision made during those workshop was to roll out fraud proof, you know, in the next few months and work on pre-consensus longer term. Okay, so um, I want to know what your thoughts are on certain people who are saying that Bitcoin needs to remain the same as version 0.1 um, because I know that if you go back and actually look at version 0.1 uh, there was a lot of uh, issues with that like uh, bugs that would break the entire system and like there was a casino built in I think some sort of casino feature. So uh, keeping it at version 0 0.1 it, uh, today is not really a smart thing to be doing if you take into account all these problems it had. So what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, so there is, a, there is a ton of very weird bugs in, in the first version. Some of mm -hmm. them are system breaking bugs. Um, like you could spend any coins with up true up return as your signature, for instance. So, you know, the system was not secure at all, essentially. Um, so this is, you know, coming back to that is, I think, not a good idea. But even if you say, okay, we want to come back to that, but except, you know, like we fix all of those bugs, but, you know, if we discover all those bugs in 10 years, um, what makes us think that, you know, no, everything is perfect and we are not going to discover, um, you know, the next series of bugs over the next 10 years. Um, I would rather see the, um, I think what's important is the digital cash aspect of it, right? Um, people, they get, it's very similar to what Core is doing actually. Core is doing like, there is this software and the software say, whatever the software say is, you know? And this is the on all on be all. And, no, we have uh, we have a, a branch of the BCH community that is somewhat similar, except it's not the software that is right now, it's the software that was uh, when Satoshi released it. But um, I think they, they, they confuse the mean for the goal, right? So the goal is digital cash for the word. Yep. And people build stuff at some point in time to try to reach that goal. And then people get attached to those stuff rather than the goal. And, and it, it's somewhat done, like if you think the goal is of digital cash is the most important, this is a somewhat dangerous attitude. All right, well, I think that about covers all the hot topics that we wanted to talk about. So thanks very much for taking the time to sit down, Amory. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Coin Spice.